the space, type in your contribution and name, then send it to 7197. Your views, our interviews on Spectrum, Radio 1 FM 90. Hello and a very warm welcome. This is Spectrum on Radio 1. I'm your host, Edmond Sisitu. On Spectrum tonight, are you satisfied with the tax administration system in Uganda and how the revenue realized is being utilized? The importance of taxation to any country or economy cannot be overstated, considering its uh, role in, uh, in raising revenues for government, redistribution of wealth, and allocation of resources among the population. Taxation is also one of the important avenues for involving citizens in national development since tax, the taxes they pay are utilized in developing the country. This affirms the contract between a government and the citizens who are in turn expected to demand for services and accountability. Currently, Uganda caters for its budget through domestic revenues by about 75%, despite its limited tax base. The Uganda Revenue Authority still faces challenges and it has, on several occasions, reported shortfalls. This has partly been blamed on the limited tax base, tax exemptions, and tax evasions, among others. The government has taken several measures to widen the tax base, including amending several laws and also putting forward incentives to attract more foreign direct investments, which will result into more businesses or undertakings for taxation. Now, taxation remains a complex matter to many Ugandan, and some of them resist paying it, saying they do not understand how it benefits them. Some Ugandans say they are not happy with the level of transparency by government and are thus hesitant to pay their taxes. Some people have also argued that the taxation system is unfair, given the fact that the rich are exempted while the poor are squeezed hard. Tonight we look at the taxation system in Uganda, the link between taxation and development, the challenges and what can be done to widen the tax base on top of ensuring proper utilization of the resources. Our guests tonight, Honorable Stephen Mukitale Birahua, Chairman of the Committee on the National Economy, also Bolisa County MP, your most welcome, Honorable Birahua. Thank you so much, we are also joined by Ms. Nelly Mus Businja Mujisha, Program Officer at the Southern and Eastern African Trade Information and Negotiations Institute, Uganda Chapter. You're most welcome, Ms. Nelly Mujisha. Thank you, Edmond. Good evening, listeners. We are also joined by Mr. Simon Gavirano, Manager in the Service Management Division at the Uganda Revenue Authority. You're most welcome, Mr. Ngavirano. Thank you, Edmond. Good evening, listeners. Honorable Dilaw, how optimized is Uganda's tax system? First of all, I want to thank you, Edmund, by uh, largely giving us the, the structure of our budget, you know, of, 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 of our, our tax system, and, uh, and most importantly, I want to emphasize that um, Ugandans, in most cases, including us politicians, in terms of calling for trap, want to discuss the expenditure, want to discuss the services, the bills, but we are not willing to delve into the revenue side, and the revenue side is really what makes the, the budget. So you can't, and the budget, the revenue side is actually the, the, the taxes. And we want to congratulate uh, um, the tax system in the, the URA in particular uh, for at least raising the 75 as we've already confirmed about that. But let me just remind you then that the 25 was around that, which we get from the working partner, is a tax of the citizens. So we should be more proud as Africans in our culture. We should be very proud if we are self sufficient. And uh, uh, how I wish we should work towards that effort, and that was the required yesterday. So I need to emphasize the fact that the country, you erode your system if you don't contribute to the development. And that's why at times we have challenges of accountability, because people are getting free UPE, free SE, free immunization, free everything. Why do you question? Because everything finds you that. So it's important that you know. But I must also mention that it is true that even those who don't know, for those who don't get tax invoices, those who don't know that, uh, they, who don't pay uh, the, the, the pay as you earn, uh, which, which, you are, which government finds much easier to get, you also contribute in indirect terms, in indirect taxes on the charges of all the imports which come in this country or which have an import duty. So I'm, 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 give, I'm practically giving you the structure of the of our, our tax system. It's easier to get import duty on entry. It's easier to get uh, Edmond at Radio 1. Your, 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 
easy as you earn. Uh, it's easy to get um, uh, taxes which are more uh, indirect. The unfortunate part of that is it becomes regressive. Uh, uh, a best tax system would be, uh, would be progressive. And that's why we should really broaden this country's tax base. And areas of broadening are there. Why, why, what we need to emphasize is that um, in this uh, era of ICT, we need to support URA and all government departments, including KCC, including the registration board, that if you open a company tomorrow, that, that company should have the tax identification and URA should start sending invoices. You understand? If you're putting up a property, KCC should plot all roads. And that's why I didn't support uh, the, the Kampala bill without including Mukono, uh, Mukono and PP and the neighborhood of Bokiso and the table because immediately you're putting up property, you should have a tax number. And, and that's where money should be coming from. So, with the national ID, with increasing uh, plotting of our roads and our, and, our, and, our, and our properties, we can get a lot of um, uh, and, regis and, and the registration bureau connecting with, with you, you can get a lot of tax, in corporation tax, in land tax, in property tax, but the national ID was required yesterday for us to be able to capture all the because people, by the way, not uh, as we talk about government wanting the money, but we also need to help the private sector. Very many landlords in town are being conned by people who identify themselves as a different person. They are conning banks. Now, if we want money from landlords and from banks, we should protect them by having a national ID so that the same person, even if he left here, wherever he goes, he can be traceable for the rent of a private sector, for the money of a bank, but most importantly for the tax that the government requires. So, we, we have challenges, we need to grow our resources before we demand for more uh, loans for university graduates which we were required yesterday. The government is putting emphasis on infrastructure, we are doing dams, we now are trying to decide on more power. We need money for you. had the last parliament, we had pressure on health facilities, the government has recruited more health workers at health center threes and uh, uh, health center fours. But all that requires more no resources. So, for me, I want to emphasize, before we put so much on uh, spending, spending and demanding, let us grow the resource, right. let us grow our tax base, and if we do that, then the demand should be, where does that money go? And that is a very important uh, cutting question. The moment you have collected the money, it must go where it best serves the country, it must go where there is a ton of risk, it must go where it grows more money, it must go into the cash cows of this country where we expect the tourists the agriculture sector, which is uh, the country is depending on, because a tax is also a tool to redistribute. Right. Because this country has a growth, meaning there is a, 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 a stinking rich. But the tax system should be able to take money from the stinking rich and to redistribute it. But the tax, finally, is also very important in the areas where there is global turbulence. It can be used as an import substitution tool. You slap high taxes on imports, more also when we suspect some inferior goods are being dumped from other countries, you can use a tax. You charge prohibitive taxes, 100% plus, so that you discourage, you discourage uh, the importation, of importation and you can replace it with an import substitute so that you encourage. You've heard the private sector woman talking about the, uh, the, the buy Uganda, promote Uganda yes. by the GDN, the Dagawas and woman. So that's a tax should be used comprehensively. Not just because we are putting present Madame Kajina to raise more money, but right. we should look at it holistically so that it can help the economy to take it where we want it to be. Right, very interesting uh, and insightful information there. Yeah. Uh, let's hear from you. Well, how do you rate Uganda's tax system? <laughs> um, we've, we've had a number of discussions around that, and uh, usually the forums that we organize or the forums that we, we where we bring people together to discuss issues of tax. One thing that has come out clearly is that the system is, is regressive in the way that you find one person paying so many taxes. You, you know, the, the, the system relies so much on consumption taxes, and so you have someone paying that, in the, even, of course that is indirect, but the person is paying that, the, so many goods, they are paying payee, they are paying, I don't know what tax.
tax the card import you know the, the whole system you someone gets so drained and then the, the owner is painting a very rosy picture of how the country should look like but you see people are tired of not understanding where their money is going you know where the, in every day there is a story here that this has this money was embezzled here and all these taxpayers funds where you know everything is not accounted for and so and then the, you want to, to to widen the tax base and then you want to make sure that the budget is, is 75 percent funded by domestic resources but how do you guarantee that the person is going to be happy about paying taxes when you know even the money that is being collected is not being looked after well so for us it's it's really you know people are tired you know you go to communities and you're talking to, to someone down there and you know, even people here within town people are, are tired they, they don't see what's what's happening where is the money going you know why are we paying this we're paying that then they introduce this license and then they introduce this and you know someone by the end of the day you have you've earned about a hundred thousand and you're going back home with twenty thousand because you've paid just about everything so it's really regressive in nature and we need to reach a point where we balance the government needs to promise citizens that money is going to be used in the right way if, if everyone is going to be happy if you are is going to collect as much money as they want the government is going to be able to send money to all these different services people need to to see where that money is going so you think it's possible for the UR to get more money if it people is if people are happy there are actually countries taxes. out there where people are happy to pay taxes right. you, you don't see any potholes you see the hospitals are, are catered for the services are catered for but well, I'll, I'll also point what Mr. Honorable Rao said you go to the communities and people are very at ease there they I mean everything is catered for but they don't realize you know things are not moving right things are not systematic so right. people would actually be happy to pay taxes if, if things were organized interesting I was talking to someone the other day who lives in Europe and they say that in Europe they pay wealth tax of 40 50 percent he actually said in his country they pay 50 percent I say that's too high saying no people are actually happy to pay it they have because to they know they see that roads and everything works yeah they're everything works they're happy to pay it I mean you go to a, a place like Norway and uh, there is no single pothole there is no dust there is no I mean you're happy to be in a country of that kind because you see where the money is going you, you see the resources you see everything is systematic that there are buses on time they are you know I was driving in a foreign capital one day with someone from Africa and some people from other places and this man was driving and says well this was not even have a single portal and they said I miss my portals back home <laughs> 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 Is, uh, is the system being improved? You have had the concerns from two sides. Is the system being improved? Do you expect things to change? Do you tax more? You worry about, you worry about the base a little bit. Thank you very much, Edmund. In a nutshell, Honorable Birawa here credited URA for this, the changes we have made. The system is actually improving. Uh, our mandate as URA is basically to implement tax policy through the tax laws. Now, we are mandated to put in place procedures within which we can help taxpayers meet their tax obligations. One of these is uh, sensitizing them. Actually, I'm very delighted that uh, civil society, Nelly and Siatini have taken uh, interest in this area. Yes. That uh, by coming out to try and create awareness, they're in a way contributing to our sensitization campaigns. If the communities, the citizenry are aware of their tax obligations, the taxes they pay, we are sure we are going to have a tax aware generation and collecting taxes will be much easier. Uh, at the same time, we have tried to go E. We have put in place automated systems that try to encourage the taxpayers to self-serve and then also to do it at their convenience. For example, our online system reduces the cost of compliance in a way that someone does not have to come to URA to file a 
tax return. They can do it wherever they are as long as they can access the internet. At the same time, we are also available to assist them where they meet challenges. And then lastly, we disseminate information, tax information. We have also tried to translate it in the major local languages. So we believe that uh, the future is bright if we continue this way. Well, the tax to GDP rate ratio is a little bit low. Yes, and uh, some people have said it's because you concentrate on a few people, the ones that are easy to find, pairs you are invite on Coca-Cola and other things. What plans do you have at the URA to widen this? It is true, our tax to GDP ratio has been quite low. It has actually stagnated at about 13. 15, 15. And uh, this is attributed to three major issues. One is the architecture of our economy. When you look at the structure of our economy, it is uh, largely informal, dependent on agriculture. Uh, when you look at the demographics, we have uh, very many youthful population that is unemployed, and yet these are the productive ages that should be contributing to, to the taxes. The other issue is that uh, there are some issues of tax policy. You find that uh, the way tax policy is designed, quite a number of activities have been left out of the tax bracket. For example, I'll tell you, agriculture, which is the largest sector, virtually everything in there is untaxed, right from the input, then uh, if it, it's large-scale agriculture for agro-processing, you find that uh, there are exemptions in there. So. The reason the tax GDP ratio has remained low is because of this. But the major one is the informal sector. The large informal sector, we have failed to tap into it. One of the reasons has been measured by Honorable here, the absence of the national ID. How that help? Tell us. Uh, in URA to assess somebody, it requires that someone is registered. You need a tax identification number. Now, it is difficult in the absence of the national ID in that we do not have adequate information to know all our taxpayers. The other one is about uh, the lack of mapping. We don't know Edmund's address. And yet it is a key requirement of the name tax laws here. <laughs> After that pothole. Yeah. <laughs> so it is really difficult. So what we are hoping that uh, if we can have a national ID to be a key starting point. Right. Yeah. So, but well, some people talk about politically connected people whom you raise, you, you let go without paying taxes. So why do you give people rebates based on their political affiliations? That is not true. If you examine our tax laws, you'll not find it anywhere that uh, if Edmund is connected to the government, I don't know how you voted. That they should not pay taxes. What happens here is that uh, our tax system is fair and equitable. That everyone is the same. If uh, you are from party A and uh, you have tax to pay, we will treat you exactly the same way as someone that has tax to pay and they are from party B. Yeah, really? Sure. You sure about that? Yes, I am. But, oh, yes? But uh, right. maybe just to say, if, if someone is earning two million yes. every month, they are buying sugar at the same price as the person earning it, earning a hundred thousand every month. So people who earn more should be paying ten thousand for a kilo of sugar? Well, they should be. I, I don't know how that can work. But you see, it's it's a whole system of how I mean, how do we balance? You know, the whole progressive kind of system of tax. How do we balance it? It's something that you know, needs to go beyond URA and discuss even at the policy level with, with the other well, I'd like to hear more of those yes. views. Should, I would like you to tell us from Zetini how that can actually be done. How you sell 10,000 shillings, you know, a kilo of sugar, 10,000 shillings, because I'm not answering my money. It's, it's a well, let's, let's look at you, hear your views, the scientific views. But first of all, Honorable, talk to us about uh, the UR. What are some of the things that are supposed to be doing that they're not doing? Well, first of all, let me give my own testimony that in 92, as a first graduate, my first job was relating to UR daily. So 
If you want to reduce corruption in your the first thing you do, you reduce the discretion of an officer. If you leave it to an officer to decide how much importer X and Y pays, then you have a problem. So by the time they brought the Gulbani and others, I was there. Right from the time of the Ghanaian expert, La I saw mm. the woman I was there. So I have seen the evolution of URA and I can say they are being fantastic. Thank you. But there is a lot of room for improvement because I know the game. Mm. And um, you know you know scanners to introduce a verification and just say this is a container this is enough. But with the scanner the importance of, 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 of technology is that you can see without opening a container what is in. Because somebody can declare a very inferior good which doesn't attract tax. Or even a tax exempt victim then actually does something to attract. For example, if you say a construction site and you say I'm bringing materials which don't attract a raw material. But in them, there are whiskies, perfumes, and those are the games. But I'm happy. You are a, now that's very far. You are a now has scanners. But the most important to make tax popular is to have systems that work. That I don't have to go to my from Kenya side, I spent two days as it used to be, and Uganda said two days. One stop center. Because of the system, what has left the port, what is coming to Malaba, is already captured. So that makes processing of entries much faster. But, so that makes an importer willing to, uh, and for, for big taxpayers, in, they have got to development before you had to wait for goods to come to be verified, then you pay. But now some people have paid in advance. So you already have an account and you're concerned. Yes, these are big savings, these are big improvements we have seen. We had problems of cargo going to destined to high value cargo destined to Sudan, Congo and Rwanda being dumped in Uganda. We have introduced uh, they are, actually I was among the first people in ninety four who asked for convoys for those which were good so like for one food and others. But we have since seen for a but now that there is this fuel problem. I would want to advise you, because I know the areas where these guys would rush to, to smuggle. Now that fuel is running at 4,000, I am sure you are has a bigger job now to be too. To. You must accompany every transit. You must have a check at the exit borders that this fuel which entered as, as Rwanda fuel, as Congo fuel, actually goes across the border. Otherwise, it's going to be dumped here. I, I know, I, I know the question. So, these are areas where you can improve um, uh, and also we need to make sure you've seen another area of where URA has been winning cases because this, that's another area the, the capacity for URA and government to pursue the fund what you have got you've right. seen my our, fr our my visitors in Uri the oil companies mm -hmm. they pay taxes on the, on, with the left hand they want to take it away in arbitration now you must have capacity of lawyers on the government side who can defend and of course tomorrow the companies will want to take out these guys in this case so it's, 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 the dynamics are so strong but we need to we must have the, the staff in your area who are capable to resist these temptations, and that's why at times, as uh, much as I am for rationalization of paying the whole country, but this man who is saving the country from building, I mean, deserves slightly more, possibly more than scientists. So, it's, it's a very interesting, area. but sensitization is very critical, and I want to thank um, Saitina and, and Red One for, for this kind of arrangement. Because it's a responsibility of government, it's a responsibility of the taxes to, to popularize, to sensitize people, to give them awareness. And then, as Nelly rightly put it, we the politicians, because you are just implementing our, our what was the policy, our tax policy, our tax policy is not their work. The tax bills are arrived at Parliament uh, finance proposals, Parliament approves. So we need to make sure, as I said earlier, the policy we give them. When you say there is dumping in Uganda, you don't blame URA. Right. 
we should be us. And, but they also need to be helped. There is another arm of government, for example, the, the Standards Bureau. Yeah. It should be able to help them, and even if possible, to, 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 to make some uh, consignments. You don't have to raise taxes, but you have to, pro to prohibit them completely right. from entering Uganda. Okay. Because if they do, they can become a very big problem in the future, and destroying them and, uh, and uh, re-exporting them may, may not be the best thing. But the, the, the technology, the Ascuda system, is a very big improvement. I think now you have your Ascuda Plus Plus or Ascuda World. Ascuda World. Sure. So these are very good, uh, uh, good, good, good areas. Right. But finally, the citizen who pays taxes is more aware and creates civic competence and can engage government. Yeah, that when that I can. have voters who get UP and UC and they say, uh, to, to Zare, eh? Then they okay. are not so engaging All right. as Edmund, who knows that on his check every month something is going. All right. So that awareness is very important, and that's why some of us are actually for okay. who would want to introduce graduate tax. We'll talk about that. Would want to, for me, okay. this is not my party person yet, but I will keep marketing it. Okay. I would want PTA paid in school. All right. I would want citizens to contribute more. That's okay. when they will demand. Accountability. Let's take a break. This is Patron. We'll be back after the break. Uganda Communications Commission is currently conducting nationwide mandatory SIM card registration. Register your SIM card in a few easy steps. Visit your telecom operator's customer care center or any other designated registration center and provide your phone number, a copy of a valid ID or any other valid ID with accompanying photographs such as a passport, driver's permit, voter's card or a letter from your LC. Information on your physical address or residence will also be required. SIM card registration protects mobile phone users from incidences of fraud, incitement, terrorism, and hate messages, among others. Please note that SIM card registration is mandatory, and those who fail to register risk having their SIM cards deactivated. All information shall remain confidential. Let's make communication safe. Register your SIM card today. Excuse me, what is this 300 shillings on my bill for? That is for the tented candles, madam. And this 100 shillings? That is for the air conditioning. And this 200 for the blue walls, ma'am. I can't believe this. Why pay for what you don't use or ask for? That's why we at Standard Chartered are introducing the EasyGo account, the first current account of its kind that gives you complete control of your banking charges. For more details, visit a Standard Chartered branch or call 014 uh, Would you like to leave me a tip, please? Hello, Auntie PC, I'm away. I could tell I'm at the beach having fun. You know, I have free calls. <laughs> I'm basically calling everybody. But don't get to fry, Auntie PC. I'm going to get back to you. Oh, and surrender food. I am away. Actually, I'm calling everybody. <laughs> don't get off. I will get back to you. Oh, Musei. Musei, uh, I've just forgotten what I wanted to tell you, but remain on right now. As soon as I remember, <laughs> I'll get back to you. Yeah, ma, way. MTN, hi, ba, Enjoy free MTN weekend calls. Load a total of 2,000 shillings or more between Monday and Friday. Dial star 188 hash to activate free MTN weekend calls. MTN, everywhere you go. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90. Welcome back on Spectrum tonight. Are you satisfied with the tax administration system in Uganda? And our revenues uh, realize is being utilized. Our guest tonight, Honorable Stephen Mukitale Birawa, Chairman of the Committee on the National Economy, also Bonisa County MP, Ms. Nelly Businja Mjisha, Program Officer at the Southern and Eastern African Trade Information and Negotiations Institute, Uganda Chapter, and Mr. Simon Gavirano, Manager Domestic Taxes Department at the Uganda Revenue Authority. He will be able to call in and uh, discuss with us tonight. Nelly, what is the URA doing, not doing, that is supposed to be doing? <laughs> Go deeper for us on that. The, I think for me, the, the problem I have with URA, and every time I try to approach URA and invite them here, there, they always limit their, they tell me about their mandates, their mandates, everything is about their mandate. What would you like them to do, to demand accountability for the money they I collect? I think they need to have a, a bigger, a, a broader conversation with citizens and, and 
go beyond their mandate. You know when you go. Well, let's talk about you. Talk about marriage. You talk about boundaries. Should they be man? What? I mean, they collect the money. Pass it on. So a lot of it is stolen. What should I they do? I think they should know where that money goes because sometimes you you go to to forums or dialogues that, and I keep referring to the community level because there is where you really get voices and people. For them, as far as they are concerned, you are is is the, the person they need to be asking. But you see, they also may not understand their mandate, which is of course collecting and accounting, and you know the rest is, is government. So they should ask government to tell them where the money was spent. I mean, they sh they should like, their mandate needs they to be broadened. You know, for me, I'd like you are saying that is, 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 as long as people are happy, they will be able to widen that, that tax base and collect as much revenue as possible. Right. But if they, are, if they are not having these conversations and they are sticking to their mandate, people are not happy with the taxes that are being collected. So how do they increase their revenue? How about the parliament? What should parliament be doing well, to help them? Parliament, parliament the judiciary. To, uh, again, they need to talk about these issues much more. Mm -hmm. I feel sometimes parliament is so quiet. There are issues of incentives, exemptions that are not discussed at a much broader level with parliament. I don't know if members, for, for, for a discussion I've had before, members of parliament, I think, don't pay a lot of taxes. Some of their payments, their allowances, I don't know if they feel exactly what the public is feeling. We need them to come out outright and defend their citizens and defend their constituencies. People need to know exactly that money. So we need a fight, you know. A, 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 a serious discussion, a serious follow-up for the people who are representing. What kind of laws would you want them to Progressive do? legislation, tax legislation. Like the, the, the ones that, that see to it that, um, first of all, we need the, the ID issue sorted out. I think that needs to be cleared out as soon as possible. I don't know why it has yes. taken long. It, it was, should have been done yesterday. Secondly, I think from the budget last year to see that um, the, the people earn much more over 10 million are paying a little it's bit more. Well I think that should should work even much deeper. broader, yeah, deeper in the, in the coming budgets to see that there is a balance so that people don't get constrained. You see someone is paying, they're earning 100,000 and they're paying the same taxes, you know, on and on and on. So I think for me it is, it is really in that kind of context. How about other agencies apart from Parliament? Uh, who else well, for me I think also the Ministry of Finance especially the Tax Policy Department, I think I'd like to see them come out more and engage with civil society organizations. We, as Siatini, we, we have taken it upon ourselves and within the work that we are doing to mobilize all the civil society organizations to talk about these issues and represent different constituencies. So we've had challenges with, you know, interacting with the tax police. We'd like to see them come out more and, you know. Simon, can you give us an overview on the attitude of the taxpayer? Do people, are people very willing? When they woke up in the morning, they say the first thing I'll do today is pay taxes. Are they willing? What's the Thank you. Uh, I want to agree with Neri, first of all, that uh, it is important that many players come into this subject. Let's not just leave it to URA to be the experts at it. What are people's perceptions towards taxation? What do we see? Uh, many people seem to be ignorant, first of all, and uh, they don't know their tax obligations. Then, in my opinion, I think there is perceived complexity of the tax system. Whereas URA has uh, tried as much as possible to simplify it, people think it is quite complex. Maybe just because they are negative about taxation, they have not even bothered to see that it is quite simple. And then, like Nelly said, they say there is lack of accountability. What is it that their money does? The money they give to us, the money we collect from them. And of course, we always tell them that accountability is given by the minister in the budget speech. They say we collected so much, we did so much, we intend to do all this, but I believe they're asking for more. They want it to go beyond that. And what, then, mean? what, what does they want? Uh, Nelly here will tell you that uh, they want members of parliament to break it down for them, for example, in their communities and say 
my constituency contributed so much and uh, because of so much we have been able to get schools they want that direct relationship between what they pay and service delivery now because you are can give it to them they tend to be negative towards taxes because for us we tell them broadly that uh, the taxes you pay are used for provision of public goods security name it and then they perceive that uh, there is a bit of inequality in the tax system. Yes. Like you mentioned that uh, because of political connections, you give some people rebates because they are politically connected. Again, like what I said, it is just perceived. I would challenge anyone to come out and say, so and so got an exemption because of his affiliation to party X. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like it's been said before, the corruption, low levels of professionalism are some of the things we are being accused of. But uh, in URA, I'll tell you, there is uh, zero tolerance for corruption and they have put in place mechanisms to deal with stuff that are engaged in such practices. All right, before we move to Honorable, talk to us about how serious tax evasion actually is at the URA. Actually, that is one of the challenges we face. How do people evade taxes? Uh, many ways. Uh, we have seen, uh, the, okay, there are those sensitive goods. The most smuggled item, I'll tell you for now, is cigarettes. We have seen cigarettes being smuggled through fuel tankers, for oh. example. Yes. Uh, then uh, concealed... They say it's fuel. The average is saying it's fuel. Yes. Because this is a law. Or a truck takes fuel to the Congo, and when it's returning, they have put in super much or those cigarettes from Congo. Very good. Yes. Then... Uh, of course, the other item is Cavera, polythene bags. Yeah, because they, they attract a lot of duty, eh? People. Because of the environment. Yeah, so. they want to smuggle them and evade all these taxes. Also, counter books, I think. And then uh, wines and spirits. Wines and spirits? Yeah. Counter books were an issue at some Yeah, they are. They are. Yeah, that is the evasion we see. <coughs> right. Yeah, it is not this outright where it's going to be exchanged between the tax authority and them, but it is mainly concealment, the smuggling occurs by concealment. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You spoke a little bit about graduate tax. Talk to us about how, why do you really want this tax to be brought yeah, You see, apart from putting all the pressure on the money collected through the, the, the internal revenue uh, the department in the sticks for and the, the other taxes we are talking about, the, the import taxes, we need to talk about the non-tax revenue. The non-tax revenue will be put in, will ease a lot of pressure from the budget at the same time. If, for example, all our districts were raising money to finance their councils, their, 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 their transport, but they don't have capacity. They, they are all depending on central government. You know, where the money we are raising from GT it has now to be provided by the center, which is not a good uh, tax policy. Just yes, you see here, you see, and all municipalities and urban are sleeping giants. If we funded the land sector and plotted all our town councils and municipalities and they knew my residence plot number and for everybody who registers a, a company and the, 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 he gets a tax identification number and URA has good, you know, it cannot be URA alone. It must be other arms of the local governments must raise their own money and they have the potential. And I believe if Madame Jean from CC is assisted to, 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 to uh, identify every business. He has talked about the informal sector. Look at Katu, look at uh, Kiki, uh, this place here, Leva. You can see the presence of banks there is the example of money there. Yes. Because banks have refused to go to some of our districts. <laughs> but you see it in there, Endeavor. you find the eight banks in Endeavor, mm. you find how, because there is money there. Mm. So this informal sector has to be targeted. Even Chukubo here. That's why there are now so many banks uh, down there. But another area we have not looked at is the telecoms. Yes. I think telecoms are making a lot of money in this country. Um, and uh, what 
whatever messages you get, uh, this is some gambling going on now. They sell all sorts of things. I, I don't think URA and finance has really opened how much money these companies are getting. That could help this country. Yesterday I was shocked. I went to, uh, to Melissa through Kiandong, and Sudanese are buying produce in Uganda. I came back through to Woga, and then for the first time, I've been knowing what Congolese taking fish, Kenyans taking maize, Sudanese are coming in. Without reducing farm gate prices, because these guys are middlemen. I wish, I wish they were Ugandan middlemen. Because you know the money is not a, a, a leakage in the economy, then the profit remains here and they can possibly do for us silos which government has not found money yet. They could add value. But if a Sudanese is taking Ugandan produce, he's taking the, the feeds for animals and poultry. Right. He is taking, you know, what would be the poultry? So this is another area to look at. And then also, we've not talked so much about Uganda is now part of the East African community. We are integrating. It has a very big impact on our tax system. Because you are now for some commodities as to charge within the tariff which is in agreement. Like recently, when we joined the Commissa, it was good news for a consumer who are now able to get sugar under that arrangement. But for you are and for a consumer, you are missing money. So we need to look at the broader picture of beyond the array and we look at how non tax revenue from all these organizations, from KCC, from all municipalities, from our districts, what is that we can do? And that's what I want to go back to your brother to tax special raised because I found it to be, uh, to be a, a small symptom. Now we need citizens in this country. Even if it is to pay a tax equivalent to one M, one years, which in Melissa is 20,000, which is very important. That's why you see young people now, they are gaming in the money, they are on the labels, they are. And they are taking boomeras, mm. and it produces, ah, present the same people for the kids, you know. So, it's being abused. Mm. Citizens must pay personal taxes. But I would also want a serious land reform. Okay. Because Let's if we urbanize, Yes. Because if we urbanize, it will be much easier to reach everybody. All right. And then tax all idle land. Because the Ugandans are now... Idle land. You know, they are now speculating in land. They just keep it there. Okay. If that land was being taxed, I'm sure we would have a much more collection as far as that is concerned. Let's hear from our listeners. This is Spectrum on Radio 1. Our numbers tonight, 0414 0312260390, 2613990. Our discussion tonight. Are you satisfied with this tax administration system in Uganda and how the revenue realized is being utilized? You spoke about horrible Bilawa, you spoke about the non tax revenues. Can you broaden this for us a little bit? Yeah, you see by category the monies which are collected by uh, for example immigration, the money they collect, the money is collect on uh, on this passport. So these visas, the money collected by registration bureau, when you register your company, when in court, a lot of uh, stamp duties, uh, even our districts collect uh, a lot of non-tax revenue. These are money. Yes. Uh, All right. Wait. You remember before we were paying individual traffic men, but now they give you Since we have someone on the line. Switch on the line. Yes, Dockers.
Sziasztok! Sziasztok! Kösz. Introducing automated systems, you expose yourself to certain challenges that were not there before. And uh, I must tell our listeners that we are trying to address these issues, but I think he has exaggerated. It's not true that our system can be off for days. Eh? It is true that uh, there is intermittent outage once in a while, but it is being addressed. And uh, yes, the system is being upgraded and can handle very many transactions. Okay. Then uh, taxing of uh, tomato sellers, and yet we give tax holidays to investors. Honorable answer that. But the truth is that uh, not everyone pays tax. Tax is on chargeable income. For example, a tomato seller, if say their turnover is 10,000 shillings per day, such a person, I'm very sure, is outside of the tax bracket because it is based on gross turnover. Now, if you went for the annual turnover of someone that is earning uh, 10,000 shillings of turnover per, per, um, per day, 
that they will never ash- they will never reach the threshold for taxation. All right. Yeah. Maybe just yes, before we look, uh, th- there is just one thing I want to disagree with Simon on, and the one thing that I think the message that we have been clearly telling everyone within the forums and meetings that we mobilize in people is that everyone pays taxes. Everyone, one way or the other, whether it is a bottle of water, whether it is airtime. You know, some people don't even know that there is tax on airtime. Everyone, in whatever way, indirectly, directly, will pay taxes. What do you say about tax uh, holidays? Um, the donors have said it's not necessary. It's okay. not, and that's actually some of the. You know, it's a very. It's a, that's it. it's a balancing yes, act. Let's start from the honorable because. Yeah, uh, tax holidays, I will start from that one because it's a critical one. Tax holidays, uh, there's no study anywhere in the world which confirms that uh, tax holidays can attract technology transfer for the right for investment. But because investment destination is, is in a competitive world, if you have challenges like you've been having in power, like you've been having in. Uh, because government roles should be giving a good environment so that these investors come here. You saw investment is also trying to make it one stop center. The decision bureau has been a problem, now it's being fixed. So, because we have some challenges in competitiveness, the, 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 the exemptions tend to be uh, a compensation. But ideally, I am not for them. And we should work to, because that causes an abuse. Not everybody can get it selectively the way they are given. The other question was that we, taxes are not popular from the bill of But we must popularize, we must provide leadership and popularize uh, taxes. And the reason why, for example, you are talking about MPs. MPs have become a cushion. Because we don't have enough taxes, because we still have some challenges in health and education, these MPs have become the providers. I understand for MPs will ideally just be facilitated and not just uh, discuss so much about that. Now, the other area, the telecom lady, I would want to encourage, I don't know what level of the company you are, uh, that tax we are getting on air tag is not enough. How I wish you are, you would open into the boardrooms of your uh, the principals uh, and see how much they are declaring. All right. It's a lot of money. Okay. And uh, I have not seen any any telecom company investing back in Uganda, even to, to, to do value addition. How I wish they would plow back that profit in this country. Well, this go. country would be, would, 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 would be spinning off and, and would be much happier as a country. Well, to go. Thank you very much, Dr. Yagas. Sorry about Stephen Vitalabirava. Chairman of the Committee on the National Economy, also Bullis County MP. Thank you for coming. Square Trump tonight. Ms. Nelly Businjam Jisha, Program Officer at the Southern and Eastern African Trade Information and Negotiations Institute, the Ghana Chapter. Thank you for coming. Mr. Simon Ngavirano, Manager, Domestic Taxes Department at the Uganda Revenue Authority. Thank you for tuning in. I've been your host, Edmond Chizito. Spectrum will be back tomorrow. Everything in life. Look for success.